Shion. Shion! It's your thorns? But why? You okay? Just now, I looked like you used your maiden powers to suppress your thorns. You can really do that? Stay out of my way. Wait a second. Are you planning to go alone? Shut up! Why would you do this? I told you to shut up! I won't let you. I mean it. I refuse to let you. I won't tell you again. Move or I'll shoot. If that's the case... Then go ahead and shoot me! Do you remember back when I was stabbed? By Rolron? Yeah. I thought for sure that he had killed you back there. That wasn't the first time. Huh? The first time was when I was only a child. After that, no matter how often, I just couldn't die. Couldn't die? So you're immortal? How's that even... <clears throat> I believe you, Xion. But tell me how... How is something like that possible? My thorns. They're me, but at the same time, not. They're part of me. I have no idea why. But my thorns will never let me die. At least not before I'm meant to. You can't die before your death? When my thorns free themselves, it will be my death. <laughs> I've seen it. A darkness that swallows up everything until nothing remains. It's a vision of oblivion I can't escape. I want to believe it's all just a bad dream. But no matter what I tell myself, I... I know it's not. Yeah, but you... Wait, the whole reason you... You needed the Renesalma was to get rid of your thorns, right? If I burn away what's inside, then what will happen to the rest of me? <laughs> right. Either way you look at it, I'm going to die. But if I am going to die, I figure I can at least take my thorns out with me. That's what I've been after this whole time. That's why you turned your back on your fellow Renans and chose to fight with us, isn't it? And while we've all been fighting to keep on living, you have been with us fighting desperately to die. That was the plan? Then I met all of you, and I... Before I knew it, I didn't want to die anymore. Shion, don't lose hope yet. We'll find a way to save you. There's still time to. It's pointless. Why? Because the darkness won't just consume me. The truth is, 
It will consume all of existence as well. It was only a suspicion at first. But ever since the Red Woman triggered my maiden powers, I've been more certain than ever before. It was then that I finally came to realize my powers were holding my thorns in check the entire time. But they don't anymore. Not since Lenigus, when the wedge fell. Every day, I feel the thorn's power growing stronger inside of me. Pretty soon, I won't be able to hold them back anymore. And when that happens... They will consume all existence. <sighs> and that's why you wanted to leave by yourself. You planned to find the Renis Alma on your own and sacrifice yourself to stop the thorns. But that's... Too much. It's way too much. When this all began, I didn't care what happened to me or anyone else. And what happened to the Renans or the Danans didn't matter to me at all. I know I have to die. But I don't want to. Not now that I have this. I wish we had never met. Then I wouldn't have to feel this way. See you. Dying is no better than being a slave. How can you endure this? Elfin. It's not fair. I don't care what anybody says. I won't let it happen. You can fight this. We'll fight until the end together. Isn't that what you said to me before? Even if it should mean that it'll be the end of everything else, too? Xion, what do you want? It's your decision, ultimately. But if you decide not to fight fate, I will. Even if I have to do it alone. No. You won't be alone. I'll fight as well. Count me in as well. I want to be a force for good, not hate. And me too. I meant it with all of my heart when I told you before. Neither of you are alone in this at all. You guys. And I, for one, don't believe this venture is without hope. Huh? Xion is the descendant of a maiden from 300 years ago. Given the circumstances, it seems very likely that those events have some connection to her thorns. The true nature of which, I imagine we will discover as we make our way to Lenigus and uncover the truth of what's unfolding here. I take it you mean we might find a way to get rid of her thorns and she'll live? It's certainly possible. Though I suspect the nature of the Sovereign is connected somehow. So be it. I've already lost everything I had once. And I won't let it happen again. Shion. No matter what happens from now on, we're right here with you. All of us are. You are not alone. You guys, you're all so stubborn. On to this dream. And most of all, more than anything else, I want to be with all of you. The 
So let's go. On to Lenicus. of the world. It's hard to believe, isn't it? I believe Shion is telling the truth. What about you? As a friend, yes. I want to believe her. Everything that's happened seems to point towards some sort of great danger that's lurking ahead of us. Still, it's hard to fathom something that could usher outright doom to the world. That those really are the stakes we face. No, I understand. Even Shion doesn't seem to know exactly what will happen to bring it all about. We have so many pieces of the puzzle in our hands, so many clues, yet the complete picture eludes us. So where do her thorns fit in, then? Well, I imagine they must sit at the very center of it all. You remember the voice we all heard while we were inside the Wedge, don't you? Yeah, I remember. It was the will of Dana's astral energy come to life. Well, that's what we all thought. Right. And from that, we're able to hypothesize how vast concentrations of astral energy can become sentient. Let's return to when we found Xion in Pelegion. When her thorns went wild, they contained far more astral energy than any mere Renin would normally have inside them. So you think those thorns might be alive too? That their will is what keeps her from dying? But why would they want to destroy the entire world? As for that, I really cannot say for certain. Its goals still remain a mystery. It may be a mere fluke that her maiden powers have been able to contain it thus far. You know, I've noticed since we've met that you like figuring out riddles. Can you blame me? When one realizes that the world they once thought to be true is but a mere facade, they can't help but seek the truth. Especially when that deception has led to others getting hurt. Dohalim? I imagine the remaining pieces of the puzzle that we seek rest somewhere within Lenigus. As for what the final picture will look like, who can say? I think it's best we not dwell on it too much for the time being. Right. Are you holding up? Who, me? Yes, you. You took a hit from those thorns again, didn't you? Oh, that? That was nothing. Compared to what Xion's going through, you mean? Still, even if you yourself might be willing to endure that kind of pain, that doesn't mean Xion wants to have to see you get hurt by her thorns, you know? <sighs> yeah, I know. I'll be careful. Xion doesn't know how lucky she is to have you around, you know? Dashing in to save her at the last minute. Yeah, yeah, very funny. I'm being serious. You went up and held her close like you still had that mask on, and you didn't even bat an eye. She really needed that. That's what I mean when I said you saved her. Just like you did with the rest of us. I just want for Xion what we all have. The ability to touch someone without the fear of killing them. Those thorns have robbed her of the kind of everyday things we all take for granted. And it's not right. You can say that again. It may be normal for us, but that doesn't make it any less special or important for her. I hope she gets what she wants. I have my own dreams. But a world without her, where she dies so we can all survive, isn't a world I want to live in. Agreed. It's like more and more keeps getting taken from her, and I'm done with it.
Did you know? You mean about Xion? Yeah, I didn't have the slightest idea. I mean, every once in a while I thought something seemed a little off, but I never could have imagined. It's like a completely different world was spinning around me and I couldn't even see it. You and me both. I mean, I knew something was bothering her, but I could never quite figure out what it was. You? But you're the one always looking out for her, aren't you? That's what I thought. But in reality, I didn't understand it all. What I thought was helping and being there for her was actually just driving her into a corner. At least you figured it out in time, though, right? I don't think we're out of the woods yet. But yeah, you're right. We brought her back from the edge, and we're going to stop those thorns from taking her. No matter what. Yeah, with all of us together, there's nothing we can't handle. Shion, the world, we can save everyone. And I mean it when I say we, Alfin. I know. No lone wolfing it. Hey, you're the expert on what my dad would say. Do you think he'd pat me on the back or tell me off? Zephyr, I don't think that he'd have that much to say, to be honest. You're your own man now, Law. And you've already made up your own mind about what you want. I guess he couldn't say anything even if he wanted to. Law. Sorry. I guess those of us amongst the living have enough problems to deal with, don't we? We'll need all our strength to save Xion. I'll probably end up worrying again at some point, but I guess I'll think it over more then. That okay? Yeah, I think it is. Can't sleep? After everything we just heard? How could I? Fair enough. Xion's had to deal with so much on her own. Even when we were all laughing and celebrating, she just kept quiet and didn't say anything. I thought she was keeping her distance because of her thorns. That it was because she didn't want to hurt anybody by getting too close. I just figured that that was the type of person she was, you know? But it turned out to be none of that. All this time, she felt like she had to die and sacrifice herself for the greater good. But even then, she didn't think she could say anything to us about it. I know. She was so alone this entire time. How could I call her a friend and yet be so completely blind to everything she was going through? I'm sure it made her happy, knowing you were there for her. You really think so? Yeah, I do. If she didn't think of us as friends, I don't think she could have ever opened up to us like that. You were a good friend to her before, and you'll be an even better one now. Yeah, I really hope so. I want to be the best I can for her. When you think about it, we were all alone in our own way. But over time, we've all found ways to let each other into our lives. I hope Xion's able to do that one day too. No, I mean, I hope she's able to do that more. Lots and lots more. I think it'd be really nice if we could all just be there to support each other when it really counts. And forget about our grudges and pain. Rinwell. Doing all right? <laughs> I seem to cause nothing but worry. As much as I try to look like I have things under control, everyone still worries about me. You're not the only one. Hey, do you remember the first time you said I was your friend? No, 
When was that? Sorry, I can't remember. That's okay. It came so naturally to you, I'm not surprised you forgot. I was different back then. The Danans were not even people to me, and I knew I would always be alone. But in that room with Deadheim, when you called me your friend, it just shattered the wall that I'd built up around me. Because until that moment, I'd only seen you as a means to an end. I thought of you as a way to use the Blazing Sword, and to obtain the Renis Alma. <sighs> but after that day, one time became two. And before I knew it, you'd made a habit of calling me and Dohalim your friends. It didn't matter that we were Renans. You cared about us as you would any other people. Then, everyone else started to call me their friend too. To think of me as their friend. Before then, I never even dreamed I could have that. I didn't want to die and lose you all. But I also didn't want to live if it meant you would all die in my place. Shion. But then I realized. I'd only really been thinking of myself that entire time. After saying how I felt, and hearing what you all had to say, I finally understood that. <sighs> Don't worry, it's okay. I'm not planning on dying anymore. I've met too many people along the way who I truly care about to give in now. So I'll fight. For Dana and for myself. I'll fight against my fate to preserve our future. And I'll win, come hell or high water. I don't know how we're going to do it, but I won't let the world end because of me. It's going to be a long, hard road ahead, Shion. Our fight won't be over until everyone, both Danans and Renans, can finally live in peace. But I swear I'll be there with you, until the very end. Thank you. Remember what we learned back in Calaglia? There's no wall so high that we can't break it down. Yeah, I think you may be right about that. Everyone well rested? Then let's go. We depart for Lenegas. Well, it's the moment of truth. This lady better hold together once we're up in the air. La, don't say that! You're going to jinx us! Speaking of which, Alfin, this bucket of bolts got a name? A name? Hmm. You know, I'm not sure she ever had one. I never really thought about it. Well, after all the trouble we went through to find her, we should give her one, right? I was thinking something like... Thaw Knights. Huh? It means owl in the ancient tongue. Literally, the one drawn to the skies. I like it. Sounds perfect for our little escapade. Not sure I'm completely convinced, but... Well, it's as good a name as any. From now on, she'll be known as the Fall Knights. Okay, people. We have two goals. 
First, we need to get to Lenegas and make the Renans finally leave Dana alone. And then, we need to figure out the truth behind Shion's thorns and find a way to save her. Sound good? All right, and let's go. You know, I can still hardly believe it. Believe what? I mean, just look at it. The whole of existence crammed inside a tiny frame. Now that you mention it, I guess you're right. It does look more like a painting than a living, breathing world. From up here, all the struggles we've been through feel so insignificant. Nothing like realizing how small you are to put everything into perspective. Kind of makes the differences between the Renans and the Danans feel pretty small too, huh? How much longer until we reach Lenegas? There are better ways to use your time than napping. We should take a moment to familiarize ourselves with the facilities on board before arrival. Good idea. The Starship may end up serving as our base of operations once we're down there. Think you'll be all right with the controls? You mean the one set to automatic pilot? I dare say I'll manage. I'm basically just here to supervise. In that case, she's all yours. Everything okay, Shion? You seem a little different. Different? Like in a bad way different? No, not at all. You seem more driven lately, like you found a zest for life. It suits you. We'll be going to Lenegas soon. This must feel like a homecoming of sorts to you, huh? What was life on Lenegas like back then? You know, before you came to Dana. Let's just say... I don't have many happy memories. I've had thorns my whole life, for as long as I can remember. They called it treatment, but in truth, they were just using me as a guinea pig for their research. You mean, they experimented on you? That's right. All I was to them was a riddle to solve. They poked and prodded me, trying to figure out what triggered my thorns or changed the form they took. Day in and day out, every single day, one test after another. I'm still surprised they didn't try to dissect me. The look they gave me whenever one of them touched my skin. How could I forget it? Reeling from the pain, like I was a monster or something. Some existence, huh? A blight on any I touched, helplessly complicit in their pain. I thought things couldn't get any worse, but then they did. I started to have nightmares, visions of the coming apocalypse. <sighs> Is it any wonder I lacked a cheery disposition? Unable to so much as touch another soul. Loneliness was my best friend. Sure, I survived, but with the knowledge that one day I'd be swallowed up by oblivion. That's when it hit me. If I was going to die, then it should mean something. If I have to sacrifice myself to save the world, so be it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you relive that. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm in a much better place now. You say it's your destiny to die so that others can live. But why not the other way around? Why shouldn't we be the ones dying to save you? Uh, are you crazy? Why would you sacrifice your life for... That's exactly my point. Why should you have to give up your life just because you drew the short straw in the destiny stakes? How is that even right? It's that logic that's used to justify slavery 
as if some of us were just meant to be sacrificed. This struggle was never about saving only ourselves. But that doesn't mean we have to give up our own lives to save everyone else's either. If we're doing this to protect people, if we're doing this to save the world from destruction, then that has to include saving each other as well. A world free of sacrifice. That's what you've been fighting for all along, isn't it? Not just me. We're in this together, remember? This fight is yours too, Xion. If we're going to win, everyone has to win. There can be no room for losers in this fight. Now I see it. The true nature of our struggle. A victory without losers. But that means that a Danon victory over Rena can't be the end. Do you think we can pull it off? You bet we can pull it off. We have to. It's the only hope we have of things ever changing. Yeah, you're right. No one's ever changed the future without aiming for the stars. We can do this together. I was merely thinking how it had been seven years, that's all. You mean since you became a lord and left Lenigus? I guess even someone like you can get homesick, huh? I am as prone to sentimentality as any other. Tell me, though. You too have a history with Lenigus. A traumatic one, no less. This trip will probably mean facing up to some difficult emotions. Doesn't that frighten you? Well... It is a place where I took the lives of countless people. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about it. But I can't keep running forever. The past is what it is. There's no changing that. But the future's what we make it. I see. Dohalim? Forgive me. I was wrong to pry. We have more pressing matters to address. Come back and speak to me when you finish looking around the ship. What's got Law all flustered? Only that he's afraid of flying, the big baby. And after all that fuss he made about naming the ship, too. Hey, I never said I was scared. I just think it's, you know, a little unsettling how we're going to be cruising through space in a glorified tin can. That's all. It's a starship, dummy. That's what it's supposed to do. I don't think there's anything strange about it. Well, maybe you're the one with the problem, then. Guys, guys, I'm no expert, but I think we can trust Ren and technology. It got me to Dana in one piece, remember? Oh, that's a good point. If you think so, Alfin, it must be okay. Don't you agree, Law? Hard to argue with that, seeing how you hitched a ride in one of these things before, Alfin. It's just wrong, okay? Okay? Feeling airsick? Actually, now that you mention it, not at all. These starships are a remarkably smooth ride, all things considered. Nothing like being at sea, thank goodness. Glad to hear it. That device there caught your eye, huh? I was just wondering what it is. 
It looks big enough to fit a person inside of it. It's a healing pot. It fixes injuries and illnesses. Oh, you don't say. Well, that should definitely come in handy if any of us get injured while we're down there. <sighs> Alfin? Was it something I said? No, I... Uh, I was just thinking back to when I escaped Lenigus, that's all. What with the ceremony and losing control, I was a total mess. Mayori laid me inside here. So, you're saying you got in this thing straight after escaping? But that mean... You were inside for 300 years? Yes. It sounds crazy, I know. But don't even ask me why I stayed asleep all that time. That's definitely quite some lion, all right. But still, whether you meant to or not, I sure am glad that it's this century that you finally woke up in. What do you mean? With the amount of fighting we've done, we would have never made it this far without you. And not only that, but... Alfin, can you recall back to what it is that I said to you? Back when we left Menencia? About the dream of coexistence and needing to learn what it entailed? Of course. That's why you came with us, right? To learn what you couldn't at home. Even in that time, I was well aware that what I was living was a lie. But at the same time, I also felt really compelled to fulfill my brother's wishes. I'll always remember him fondly. But the coexistence we're fighting for isn't for him. It's for people now, and those still to come. The world's bigger than just men and Sia. My dream is for all Danans, wherever they might be, to be free. If I've learned anything on this journey, it's that. And the one who brought me along was you, Alfin. I'll forever be grateful to you. Well, we're not out of this forest just yet. You should probably save your thanks. At least, until we've dealt with the Red Woman. I know. But whatever we find when we get down there, I'm through looking the other way. Kisara... Probably getting a little ahead of myself, huh? Let's take things one step at a time. Is everyone about ready? We'll soon be making preparations to land. Before we do that, just what exactly should we expect when we get down there? Kisara has a point. Now that I think of it, I don't know the first thing about Lenigus. I'd like to hear more too. It's been centuries since I was last there, and they didn't exactly give me the grand tour. Very well. First and foremost, Lenigus is was the base of operations in charge of the crown contest on Dana. Of course, it also happens to be a city in its own right, complete with its own independent society. Its social structure is based on a strict hierarchy. Put simply, the strength of an individual's astral arts carries great weight. Enough to determine someone's social rank, you mean? But astral arts are innate, right? So people's positions are fixed at birth. They can be honed with the right training, and there are admittedly other factors at play. But yes, that's basically the gist. As a result, family lines that churn out lords and their contenders wield disproportionate influence, and those lineages are treated as nobility. Those capable of only weak astral arts are effectively an underclass, denied the right to descend to Dana even if they wanted to. Still, 
Even the lowest rung on the Renan ladder is considered superior to being a Danon. Keep that in mind down there. Thanks for the warning. As a lord, Dohalim must have been pretty high up in the pecking order, right? What about you, Xion? Come on, you've seen her skill with astral arts. You really need to ask? <laughs> Fair point. On arts alone, you're right. I'd have been sitting pretty. But you're forgetting my thorns. They weren't exactly an invitation to high society. Ah, uh, sorry. No, it's fine. It's refreshing to be around someone who says what they're thinking. Life's less complicated that way. Jeez, give backhanded compliments much? Wait a second. Are you? He is! Lost blushing! I am not! <laughs> Of course, separating people into castes based on something arbitrary like arts is discrimination at its worst. As if such simplistic criteria could ever be a measure of someone's worth. So this Red Woman, are we expecting to find her on Lenegas? I would wager so. Lenegas is too deeply involved in all this to discard the possibility. Chances are she's also connected to the Renis Alma being stolen from us in Pelegian. If the Renis Alma is being used to exploit Dana, we need to take it back at all costs. That Red Woman's got a lot to answer for. Just as well I've got a ton of questions. We're about to land. The descent could be a little bumpy, so brace yourselves. If there are clues about your thorns out there, Shion, we'll find them. There's no one here. I wasn't expecting a welcome mat, but still... Lenegas's infrastructure is largely automated. Besides, people won't be expecting incoming traffic while the crown contest is still underway. Do you think anyone realizes that we're here? We may not have received a royal welcome, but I doubt our entrance went unnoticed. Don't let your guard down. I really hope we don't have to fight anybody while we're here. So now what? We've come all this way on a hunch that this Red Woman is here, right? And if we're lucky, the Renis Alma too. Any idea where we should start looking? There is an area of the city that is accessible only to the Sovereigns, known as the Forbidden Zone. That seems as good a place as any for us to start. Forbidden? What are they hiding? I don't know, hence my desire to find out. Fortunately, we just so happen to have a sovereign in our midst. In any case, changing the shape of a huge structure such as Lenegas would have required an immense source of power. Then you think that source might have been the Renis Alma? Precisely. Alfin said that he remembered the Renis Alma being used in the spirit channeling ceremony three centuries ago. Whatever the ceremony's purpose, if preparations are underway for it to be held once more, then the Renis Alma might be in the same place as last time, possibly together with the Red Woman. Hiding something of that worth in the residential quarters would only court trouble. In which case, it stands to reason we should be looking somewhere normally out of bounds. Is that it? Indeed. But it's been over 300 years since I was made a sovereign. You can't seriously think I'll be able to waltz right into the place after all this time. There's only one way to find out. If there's even a chance you can get us in, I say we give it a shot. 
Xion's right. Who knows? We might even find a clue to her thorns while we're at it. All right. It's not like we're swimming in leads, so let's try to track down the Forbidden Zone. Beyond that wall lies a city full of Renans. The capital city where Xion and Dohalim used to live, no less. Who knows what we'll find on the other side. What in the world? This being Renan territory, I was prepared for a lot of things to look different. But this? This is a bit more than I anticipated. The very foundations of the city have shifted. What could have caused this? When Lenigus changed shape, it must have had an effect on the interior, too. Maybe when they sent the Wedge down to Dana? But they wouldn't move around the places where people live. These are their homes, right? I would think the citizens themselves didn't have much say in the matter. Either way, locating the Forbidden Zone just became that much trickier. Dohalim? Is that you? Avakir, I'm glad to see you're well. So it is you! But why are you here? Shouldn't you be down on Dana participating in the crown contest? And these people! So you haven't heard what happened on Dana, then? Heard what? Someone you know? An old friend. Hey, Dohalim. Don't tell me you've started keeping company with- They're with me. More importantly, what's happened here? Uh, I'm really not sure. The city's foundations began to shift without warning, and now everything looks like this. We're all waiting for the Sovereign to tell us what's happening, but so far... Avakir, listen to me. We're looking for the Forbidden Zone. Do you have any idea where we might find it? The Forbidden Zone? What business could you possibly have there? Trust me. The less you know, the better. <sighs> You're just the same as ever. <laughs> I wish I could help, but what with the changed topography, I can barely locate my own home let alone the Forbidden Zone. Very well. It looks like we'll have to find the way there ourselves. Have you seen Faria yet? No. I see. Well, nothing much has changed with her. If anything, she's probably even more... I can well imagine. Why did you come back? You know it can only result in pain for you both. I've no doubt of that. You really are the same as ever. Fine, I understand. Just don't say I didn't warn you. And take care of yourself. Okay, Doe? So who's Faria? Law? <sighs> if what Avakir said is true, 
It would seem the people of Lenegus are being kept in the dark about what's happening down on Dana. They seem to be just as clueless about what's going on up here in their own world. Despite the fact that it's actually here that the Wedge originally came from. We need more information. Let's talk to the citizens, see what we can find out. While we're at it, we can ask them about the Red Woman, too. And don't forget about finding the way to the Forbidden Zone, either. Let's leave the talking to Xion. We can't have a bunch of Danans poking their noses around. Good idea. I think that's for the best. I shall assist. You sure? Being a lord on Lenigus has its advantages. Right. Then we'll leave it to you two. The Danans among us should probably keep our heads down. What if people freak out? I shall explain it away by saying I'm leading you. What are we, dogs? Everything will be okay now. I know the basics of healing arts, but my skills pale in comparison. Your Lordship! Oh, what a great honor it is to finally meet you! I descended to Dana during the last crown contest also. Alas, when the contender I was backing failed to clinch the title, I returned. I witnessed the deaths of so many slaves. Indeed. Sorry to interrupt, but we're looking for a woman dressed all in red. Have you seen anyone of that description? All red, eh? No, I can't say I remember anyone like that. I imagine she'd stand out somewhat, too. Yeah. What about down on Dana during the crown contest? You didn't see anyone like that hanging around the Lord you were serving? What's with all these questions? I've never seen her, okay? Not recently or otherwise. Why do you want to find her anyway? Never mind. Forget I asked. Sorry to take up your time. Is everything okay? You look a little lost. Hmm? Oh, yes. I can't seem to find my way home, is all. I was just about to make my umpteenth attempt at a new route. I was hoping to head this way myself. The situation is a real pain, huh? I suppose the Sovereign knows best. I daren't stay here too long, though. A lower caste can only linger around these parts for so long before I outstay my welcome. I was hoping to avoid it, but maybe I'll have to go that way after all. You mean you know another way round? Lord Dohali Milkaris! But how? Last I heard, you were in Dana competing in the crown contest. Yes, strange, isn't it? If you know another route, we'd be grateful if you could tell us. But, but of course. Please forgive me. There's a wall that sprung up ahead of here, with what looks to be an entrance in it. I thought maybe it was a passageway between the different quarters, but I've no way of knowing for sure. It's worth investigating, at least. I shall go and assess the situation. In the meantime, wait for me here. If it looks safe, I'll come and let you know. You'd really do that for me? A lord troubling himself for someone of my lowly status? Our lot in life is of little consequence. We are both Renan, first and foremost. Oh, why yes, my lord. Thank you.
Oh, dear me. What an unspeakable mess this has all become. Just look at the state of our city. Even the Zoogles have stopped heeding our commands. Whatever did we do to deserve this? You really have no clue what might have caused this? Would that I have. Alas, there was no warning, no prior decree. His Highness must have deemed it unnecessary for us to know. We have no choice but to grin and bear it. But do my eyes deceive me? Could I really be standing in the presence of his lordship, Dohalim of the House Ilkaris? I believed he was on Dana. Your eyes do not deceive you. It is I, one and the same. I have returned to fulfill a special duty, the details of which I cannot divulge. As your lordship wishes. First Lanagus mutates beyond recognition, now this unexpected visit? The Sovereign's plans are inscrutable indeed. The Ilkaris House has produced a great many lords over the centuries. I shall be praying for your victory in the latest crown contest. Your good wishes do me an honor. Well, we've canvassed the city for information. What do you think? No one has the faintest idea what's happened to the city after all. They haven't heard the news about the crown contest either. You'd think that info would easily find its way up here. Has it always been like that? Not to this extent, which would indicate that something's suppressing the truth, that Lenicus is under some kind of control. Given everything that's happened to their city, the people here seem weirdly okay with it all. Yeah. That one guy even said his Zoogle had stopped listening to him. If that's true, these people are in big trouble. Everything that happens here is attributed to the Sovereign's will. It's the way people have been conditioned. Their belief runs deep. Nothing happens devoid of a reason. To them, it's all part of the Sovereign's grand plan. The Sovereign's plan. There is one thing I'm still not sure about. Just who is this person ruling over Lenegus? The Sovereign, of course. He rules from Rena while presiding over both Rena and Lenegus. Without the Lords or anyone in the middle doing his dirty work? Isn't Rena at least the same size as Dana? That's a pretty big dominion for one person to rule over. I would have thought ruling Lenegus alone would be difficult enough. The points you make are valid. Though I confess I'd never given it much thought before. Here, the Sovereign's total authority is as natural as night turning to day. Come to think of it, I know nothing of the nature of how Rena itself is. <sighs> Shion, have you ever been... <clears throat> no, forgive me. Have you met or crossed paths with, or even heard of someone who's actually made a visit to the homeland? No, I haven't. Neither have I. In which case, I would imagine that... But no, surely not. Can it really be that no citizen of Lenicus has ever been there? Hold up, what are you getting at, Dohalim? Assuming what I believe to be correct, it's possible that no one on Lenicus has ever laid eyes on the actual Renan homeworld itself. No one but the Sovereign, that is. But what about trade and communication? There's got to be a flow back and forth, surely. Not if the Sovereign is imposing his will on Lenegas single-handedly. It could be a one-way street. But I thought you said that the Sovereign's all the way over on Rena. If that's the case, can he really rule directly over Lenegas from so far away? What if something were to happen to the city, like now? I'm beginning to wonder what the nature of this Sovereign even is. Alfin said he was forced into the role, right? Just before the ceremony. But Sovereign is also the title given to the Almighty Renin Ruler. So which one is it? Whoever wins the Crown Contest inherits the throne from his or her predecessor, before becoming ruler over all of Rena and Lenegus. Thereafter, that individual is known as the Sovereign. Though, it would appear that the current ruler has gone silent. As for how Volron factors into all this, 
At this point, I no longer know what to believe. Three centuries ago, I became the Sovereign here on Lenegas. No, not just became, I was forced to. Me, a Danon. Three hundred years later, we cross paths with Volron, who also bears the Sovereign's crest. That's not the only thing we have in common. We both became Sovereign without winning the Crown Contest. Do you think Volron was made Sovereign for the same reason? Because of that ceremony? I can't say for sure, but it certainly sounds like it. But that would mean that two Sovereigns would need to exist at any one time. One whose job it is to rule, and the other for ceremonial purposes. We never did see Volron's body back in Ganeth Heros. Is a new ceremony underway with Volron at its center this time? Could that be what's causing all this strange activity here? Wait a second. You don't think Volron and the Red Woman are working together, do you? The ceremony can't go forward without the Renis Alma. The same one that the Red Woman stole. There's something else the ceremony needs. A maiden. And unless there's another one out there aside from me... Questions, questions, and yet more questions. Ones that it seems will remain unanswered until we can establish the Sovereign's identity. If the Forbidden Zone really is off-limits to everyone but the Sovereign, that seems as good a place as any to start. For the sake of liberating Dana, too. Then it's decided. That's where we need to go. One of the citizens mentioned a passage that she thought might lead to another section of the city. It could point us in the right direction. Let's go find it! Find a recipe that... Yeah, we can use this for it. Nobody left to run the show. I wonder what the people here are supposed to do. I mean, their sovereigns up on the Renin homeworld, and all their lords were sent to Dana. But Dohalim was a lord, right? Only current acting lords have power. Renin society is quite strict about such matters. Even if the other lords were still around, I doubt they'd be able to do much about the situation. I wonder what they'd think if they were here to see Lenegas now. Balsif? Cannabelt? Madria and Volron. Now that I think of it, aside from Dohalim, we know next to nothing about the other lords. Well, yeah, why would we? To us Danans, they were just enemies we needed to overthrow. Nothing more. I know. But seeing Renans in their own city, going about their day to day lives, it gets you thinking. It feels strange to imagine the lords living here too, you mean? Yeah, a little. If you're that curious about them, why not try inquiring with some of the locals? Every lord in their household has their share of supporters here on Lenigus. And luckily for us, the people here are unaware of the events on Dana, which means they should be more inclined to talk to us.
Balsef had it in him to care about someone other than himself? Really? It's possible. A change in position can do much to alter one's perspective. So even he might have had something he wanted to protect. She intended to spread it throughout all of Lenigus then. Good thing the lines were down so she couldn't. It almost sounded like she was praising them too. Maybe there was more to the guy than at first glance. I shall refrain from commenting. in helping Rena succeed. Doesn't that seem just a little inconsistent? I'm perhaps biased in this matter, I admit. However, in my mind, while all lords vie to become the next sovereign, they're also meant to serve as guardians of all of Rena. It seems like Annabelle also had people who cared about until the very end. So why couldn't he extend that to us Danans? <laughs> This area doesn't look as badly damaged as that other district we went through. Indeed, the effects of Lenigus's transformation appear to be less pronounced here. Or, viewed another way, this area was simply luckier. Pardon me.
guess her willingness to stoop to any low came from a survival of the fittest worldview. And some people here not only shared her belief, but championed it as morally right, too. That doesn't make it true. Too bad they couldn't see through her. Yeah. Ridiculous. Okay. Seems like the people on Lenegas don't really know much about Volron either. I remember being quite surprised when the Lord of Ganeth Harrows changed so abruptly. Didn't you have any doubts that something suspicious was going on? On the contrary. Remember, we Renans are raised to accept everything at face value. When you think about it, the families of Renan lords must see them differently than the rest of us. Yeah despite the brutality they're known for. They must have had a lot on their shoulders, carrying all the weight and responsibilities of Renan society. Renans live in a world where strength and power determine their position in the social hierarchy, so they tend to grow up fiercely competitive. But their loyalty to their people is also strong. It's what brings them together against outside forces, and nothing exemplifies that more than the Lords. That's what makes them the guardians of all of Renner, so to speak. Right. It's the same reason Balsif hated my guts, and Ganabelt went after you. Because we're threats to Renna. Guess that makes you an even bigger oddball than we thought. So, Alfin, have you gained anything from all of this? Yeah. I think it's made me realize that the Lords were all people, too. Balsif and the others? They all had their own circumstances to deal with as they went through life. Yeah, but still, just because they had loved ones in their lives doesn't mean... I know. What they did was horrible. I'm not trying to dispute that. But at the same time, they weren't incomprehensible monsters either. They were individuals, just like the rest of us. So I guess what I'm trying to say is... You're saying that they weren't bad because they were Renans. Or because they were terrible monsters. Even if they did terrible things, they were still just people. Renwell. Am I wrong? Not at all. Being a Danon doesn't make you a good person. And being a Renan doesn't make you a bad one. I think that's something we've all seen. Xion and Dohalim definitely make a good case for it. And I'm going to keep doing my best to make sure I earn that trust, as a fellow human being above all else. realize Renans oppressed their own kind, too. And yet, weirdly, none of them seem to mind. Am I the only one who finds that strange? It is the way things have always been, so no one thinks to question it. You have experience in that regard yourself, do you not? Unquestioning acceptance of your own servitude. Yeah, that sounds about right. Even so, the quality of life here seems much higher than any Danon city we visited. I used to think it was impossible to build an ideal society without wealth. But I suppose having it doesn't always mean people are treated fairly, either. More to the point, 
Not a single citizen seems to have even heard of the Red Woman. What if she's not here? What if it turns out we're looking in the wrong place entirely? It's still too early to say anything for sure. For all we know, she might be able to blend in, move around unnoticed. I say we hold off judgment until we've exhausted every avenue. Tell me, Dohalim, has that skill of yours got a name? And what skill would this be, pray tell? You know, when you're talking to people around town, the way they suddenly become putty in your hands. I'm afraid I don't quite follow. I do. It's called friendly intimidation. Look imposing and speak in a deep, booming voice, and presto, you'll have people wrapped around your finger in no time. I would never stoop to such scandalous tricks. Any feelings of intimidation are solely in the eye of the beholder. So there is a knack to it! How do you learn it? Can anyone do it? Now you've got me curious. Is there special training to master? Hmm, let's see. An obsession with being elegant is a must. Oh, and it helps to be old-fashioned, too. Bonus points if you speak in a way no one can understand. If you've a bone to pick with me, it'd be quicker to just come out and say it. What? They look up to you, that's all. I'm just helping them along. Hey! What's got into Alvin and Law all of a sudden? I can barely understand a word they're saying. And what's with the weird poses? Was it something they ate? I hope you're willing to take the blame for this one. I wasn't expecting them to take me so seriously. I'll go and have a word with them. There's something I just don't get. What is it? The crown contest itself has always gone ahead as planned, right? In which case, the current sovereign of Rena should be whoever it was that won the previous contest. Yeah, that makes sense. So, who was it then? Hanfrecht Milgroth, the former lord of Cislodia, if memory serves. So then this Hanfrecht whatchamacallim, he's the current ruler of Rena? The last I heard, yes. Though, admittedly, I haven't actually seen him since the end of the previous contest. You're saying that ever since becoming Sovereign, he's never actually shown himself on Lenegas? I guess over Holocom, maybe, but not in the flesh. Same thing goes for the Sovereign that came before him. Now that you mention it, I don't recall anyone ever visiting Lenegas from the Motherland, Sovereign or otherwise. And that never struck you as a little bit odd? <sighs> when you live here, it's as if you're conditioned not to notice all these strange quirks and discrepancies. The question is then, by whom? And to what end? A new Renis Alma is supposedly created to coincide with every crown contest meaning each victor is awarded their very own. In other words, if that's true, there should be as many of the things out there as there have been contests. True, but going on what we witnessed in Pelegian, it didn't look like the sort of thing that could be made to order. But if even the victor's speeches have been part of some grand deception, then where are they? <sighs> Quite frankly, I'm not even sure what to believe anymore. You and me both. Though we are Renan by blood, neither of us even knew that such a thing as a Dark Master Core existed, remember? With any luck, the Forbidden Zone might give us some answers. No use standing around here chatting about it, then. Let's get a move on. Do? 
Faria. Faria? Isn't that the person that Avakir guy Shh. was... But why are you here? Wait, don't tell me you've given up on the crown contest and come crawling back home from Dana already. Nothing to say? Even though you were willing to kill Tarnigan to secure your position as Lord, you still... Kill? I'm here to take care of something. If you wish to continue this conversation, I only ask that you wait until I'm finished. Oh, of course. You always did prefer to take the coward's way out. Even after seven years and living on that Danon rock, you haven't changed one bit. But let me tell you, I haven't changed either. Not a day's gone by the past seven years that I haven't hated you. If killing me will bring you peace, then so be it. <laughs> Dohalim, what the hell are you saying? First, I have business to take care of. If it's vengeance you seek, I will grant you it. But you must wait. My sins are legion. Let me finish what I came to do. Then you have my word. I will let you do whatever brings you peace. Sure, that's it. Run away like always. You don't even have the courage to die. No wonder you leave it to someone else. You're just a coward! Dohalim. I apologize that you had to witness that. Is it true? What she said about you killing someone? Each of us have our pasts. I am no exception. Before, back in Menencia, you mentioned having taken a friend's life over the throne. Is that what she meant? The mistakes I made there were not my first, and may not be my last. I will say no more. Did you mean what you said? About letting her take your life if she wanted to? She has more right to my life than anyone. But you can't just... Whatever happens, I have sworn to put an end to the Crown Contest, and to ensure continued coexistence in Menencia. I have no intention of expiring before I do so. There are far too many questions I still seek answers to. Besides, you have just as much reason to kill me as she does. <laughs> Dohalim! Forgive me. Some things are best left unsaid. What could be so important, it's worth destroying people's livelihoods and homes in the process? It's just... unbelievable. Uprooting an entire city as if it were mere building blocks. Someone's got an awful lot of questions to answer. From how it looks, they must be siphoning off astral energy from Dana, and then sending it to Rena. But why do all this? What for? Surely they can't be using all that energy for the crown contest. Whatever their purpose, disrupting their siphoning process alone won't be sufficient. Not while we still don't know what their endgame is. He's right. We need to stop this from happening ever again. This Forbidden Zone might be where we find some answers, right? So what are we waiting for? Let's get moving! You heard him. We don't have time to stop and chat. Let's move.
this place is beautiful! Yeah, it must be some sort of rest and leisure area for the locals. You think? Man, these Renin sure know how to live it up, don't they? <sighs> it... is something the matter, Dohalim? Before I went down to Dana, my friends and I, we... We used to gather at this very spot and play music together. Avakir, Faria, and Tarnigan. <laughs> that was a lifetime ago now. Tarnigan. He was the one that Faria mentioned, right? He was once my dearest, closest friend. <sighs> as well as Faria's betrothed. Despite Faria's lower-class upbringing, she possesses a tremendous talent for music. Entranced by her playing, I helped her overcome her sense of inferiority and introduced her to Tarnigan and Avakir. It was a time of great joy. Four people bound only by their love of music, with no care for social standing. Only the next song, the next melody, Friendship based on mutual respect, and a society where everyone is a prisoner to their social class. You really are different, Dohalim. I suppose it's natural you would see it as strange. I would have, once. Now, I think the idea of breaking away from society's constraints and choosing your friends based solely on affection is something beautiful that's worth cherishing. Besides, it was that way of looking at the world that laid the foundations for coexistence in Menencia. Your praise does me too great an honor. I was merely following the wishes of my own heart. And even then, it only lasted until the crown contest began. After that, Tarnigan and I became fierce competitors for the position of Lord. Tarnigan had fallen for Faria. By becoming Lord, he aimed to wrest her from her humble origins and raise her to the highest echelons of society. But fate was not so benevolent. What happened? Tarnigan was no match for me in combat. On a level playing field, he wouldn't have stood a chance. But he was desperate and low on options, and he couldn't stand the thought of defeat. You mean he resorted to dirty tactics to try to win, right? But then why does Faria think... Wait, don't tell me she doesn't know. How could I tell her? Combined with the trauma of losing her beloved, and by her friend's hand, no less, she would have been devastated. So instead you let her go on hating you, so she could use that hate as a crutch for her grief? <laughs> That's not the same as running away, though. It is exactly the same. Unable to face the loss of my friend and the burden of my duty, instead I decried my fate and looked away from what I'd done. As for what happened after, that you already know. But if you hadn't become Lord, Menencia wouldn't be what it is now. The Danans there would still be suffering under Renan oppression like before. <sighs> Shion's right. What other lord would have treated me as you did? Anyone else and I would have been dead long ago. You've saved so many people, Dohalim. You saved me. It's thanks to you that I'm here today. So, try not to blame yourself. The burden you've placed on your own shoulders is too much for anyone to bear. Frank as always. But I shall do my best to heed your advice. Do you think he'll be all right? Yeah, I think so. He's got Kisara. It's important to have someone like that. I didn't realize how difficult it is just to be there for someone. 
Sometimes just knowing someone's on your side can be enough. And he knows, Xion. I promise he does. I hope you're right. Alfin. Yeah? I never appreciated until recently just how much you were always there to support me. It goes both ways. You've helped me keep going more times than I can count. Maybe, but I still wanted to say thank you. I see a medic and supply officer over there. If they know you're with me, they'll likely offer their assistance. What do you say we check back in on the ranch? Did we really just spend that much money? I think it turned out pretty decent, but... What do you all think? You okay, Xion? You're not eating very much. What's wrong? Do you not like the cheese fondue that you made? Yeah, I'm used to seeing you more excited about food. You're not feeling sick, are you? No, I'm fine. It's nothing like that. It's just... 
What? I guess I just don't understand what the appeal is. We could just as easily put everything on a plate and pour the cheese on top of it instead. I suppose it lies in being able to decide exactly how much cheese you want. There's also something to be said for enjoying how it all turns out. It's fun. That's fine and all, but I wish the plate to mouth time was shorter. I think I understand. You don't like having to put in so much effort into eating something, do you? Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Actually, now that I think about it, you're a way less fussy eater than you look, Xion. In my book, there's no one right way to eat a meal. Tuck in, take your time, be dainty or devouring. As long as you enjoy the food, that's what counts. There's no need to stand on ceremony while we're out camping in the wilderness. E yeah, you're right. In that case, don't mind if I do. I've never seen someone dump that much cheese on a meal before. Do you think when Lenigus was built, it was even made with people living here in mind? What do you mean? Well, none of this happened by coincidence, right? They must have designed it to transform like this. But then, if they knew people were going to live here, you'd think they would have taken that into consideration, to avoid all this chaos. Ordinarily, yes. You'd think so. Trust me, as far as we were concerned, Lenigus was our home, nothing more. No one knew about all this. It makes you wonder whether the city was just built on as an afterthought. But if so, to what exactly? Sorry, that probably sounded weird, huh? <laughs> Not at all. Sometimes it takes an outsider's eye to help you notice what you've been missing all along. This place is a mystery, that's for sure. Something tells me we'll find answers where we're going, though. Yeah. You're right, Xion. I'm sure we will. Lenigus soldiers. Any way we can avoid fighting them? That all depends on them. Whatever happens, be you ready. Well, so much for them not wanting to fight. Oh! I am Lord Dohalim of Elven Men and I command you. The rest of the city must be erased. No. Have they been brainwashed too? Brainwashed enough. If they want to fight, they've got one. This ends now! Consider yourself finished! Go time to the wind! He's not out of my watch! Let's give it a whirl! seem different from the citizens we've come across so far. Yeah, they weren't big talkers, that's for sure. They just attacked without warning. They weren't in the least bit phased by Dohalim's presence, either. Indeed. 
They seem to recognize us as enemies, nothing more. And yet, traditionally, Lenigus hasn't been high on threats. A few frenzied zoogles during experiments here and there, but not much else. Their glazed-over eyes reminded me of the soldiers and slaves we met back in Ganeth Haros. The ones in blind devotion to Volron. I've never seen anything like that here on Lenigus before. Maybe someone doesn't want us here, and the soldiers are their way of letting us know. What with the Red Woman, the Sovereign, and Volron, we're starting to develop quite the growing list of adversaries. At least we'll know to keep our wits about us. Shiny mood. Thanks, Kisara. Thank 
carve through one! Into the shadow! More with that card! Let go 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 Still in one piece? Soldiers don't seem to have any qualms about attacking on sight. Is someone making them stand guard over the Forbidden Zone? Get lost! I'm on it! Can't get out of this! You'll be in high demand if that's the case.
Let's keep our eyes on the prize. 